society does islam permit signs the universal signs to notice as guidance does islam permit in science or signs in signs like universal signs universal science signs what does that mean universal signs like signs on the horizon signs what are the signs? Yeah, Elizabeth just said, we show you the signs uh, upon the horizon and within yourself. Within yourself and upon the horizon. So that when Allah wants to show isharat and a guidance and an understanding, those understandings are within ourself and upon the horizon. The looking upon the horizon for the exterior signs is easier for people who don't look inside. The ones whom and they're easier to catch are the outside signs and then those of the people of tafakkur and contemplation in which they spend their life always contemplating inside their reality then Allah shows the many different signs within their reality, within the character, within their connection. So through that connection then many different understandings and knowledges and realities can begin to be conveyed to the servant, inshaAllah. And our life is about trying to achieve that understanding. When we take a life of uh, looking for those signs and we slow down the concept of tafakkur is to slow down and to see the beauty of everything around us and all the signs of Allah around us. So that's all of what tariqah has been teaching. If we go very fast and we take life at you know 100 miles an hour on the freeway driving very fast on a highway, we don't see any of the scenery and we don't pick up any of the realities of Islam that Allah wanted for us. And Allah says, none know them but the men of tafakkur, the people of tafakkur and contemplation, men and women, that those whom they stop and connect their heart to see the signs, realize the signs of reality and that to stop and to see their character and to take away the bad characteristics that block them, block them from all of Allah's beatific signs and, and majestic majesty that's flowing everywhere around us. And that, that's, uh, that's, that's a great part of Sufism is to take a path in which you slow down, listen to the salawats, contemplate and see just we said before just to, the beauty of nature that you know the flower is in need of the sunshine and the sunshine is also in need of the flower. It, it wants to send its rays to something. If the sun just sends its rays upon a rock or upon the dust or upon the sand but it has a different reality when it sends it upon the flower and the flower takes that uh, radiance and takes that light and then as a praising it begins to release beatific perfumes and, and fragrances and the whole world is mesmerized by those fragrances so that's the love between the flower and the sun and Allah is describing for ourselves that that is our own reality, that everything is praising me. So if you stop and slow down and, and you absorb my light and Divine sunshine that sort of illuminates and dresses the heart of the believer, when they don't want to sit and, and to, to take the sunshine of Allah is metaphorical. When they don't want to sit and meditate it's as if they don't want Allah to be shining upon them and they don't want to reach the reality of what type of flower are they in which they take that light, they meditate, they feel the, the love of that light, the reality of that light and begin to release all its fragrances and, and beatific realities. As a result of those who achieve that then people log in to hear them, to do to, to zikr with them, to take guidance from them and to follow them. And that becomes the reality and the haqqaiq of the juzbah and, and magnetism and magnetic character that because of their connection with that Divine sunshine that greater… that's not even comparable to the physical sun. 
that when they took a life in which to sit and to contemplate and to bring Allah's light and Divinely grace upon their soul as a result of the beatific light and energies and fragrances and realities that have dressed upon them, Allah no doubt has dressed them with the juzbah. And it's an emanation from these practices and that's where the hasad in Islam is, is coming. So many people may share a post with a group and, and share something on the internet and the people who didn't do that and they just took a book, read a book and then started to talk to people. They start to come against, oh who are these shaykhs that people follow them and they need people to follow them and they need this and then they start to talk bad about that reality. It's what they're really saying is that they're just jealous they don't have anybody interested in them. And they didn't reach to a juzbah, they didn't reach to an attraction within their soul. That shaykhs are not putting out anything that say, follow me and to you know you're going to get this or you're going to get that. The real, the real shaykhs and the real guides of Allah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the ulul am, they merely just talk and they speak, it's not rehearsed, there's no book and it's a love story. From what Allah has dressed upon their heart like a, like a bird that just singing. Is the, the, the bulbul, the, the bird that just singing and everybody stops to say, oh look at the singing of this bird. But you know who gets angry at that bird is the crow. And so all these people who comment they're like crows because the crow has a horrific sound and no matter how much you try to stop and listen to the crow you can't. You're like, oh this is like so horrible, it's like screeching in my ears and in my heart. So then the crows they don't like the bulbul because they're jealous that why Allah made their sound to be beatific, their knowledge is to be mesmerizing. And that's because they took a path in which their life was to remain silent, to find themselves, to fight themselves and to ask Allah to illuminate their souls. And as a result of their love for Allah we tried to briefly describe that the night before of Mecca, Medina and Sham sharif This is an immense love story. If, if the servant truly loves Allah they enter a state in which they know nothing can satisfy them. There's not money that can satisfy them, there, there's not a person that can satisfy them and they start to cry and yearn and they have a yearning for Allah And as a result of their yearning for Allah Allah begins to love them and dress them and bring them close to His reality. As a result of Allah's love for that servant, He guides them to what He loves. It's not guide him to himself at first because he says, that's not your station just to come directly to me. I'm accepting your love and I'm drawing you close to me and my real love is I want to show you what I love. Because when, you, when, you, when you're with someone and they really love you, they share from what they really love. You know like when you go to a guest and, and they really like you, they give you the best of what they love, the best of what they have. They don't look for you know the scraps that they don't like and give that to you. Allah wants to give us the best of what Allah has, the best of what Allah has is Sayyidina Muhammad So if the servant truly loved Allah and with all these teachings then normally what would you think? If you truly loved Allah, Allah would have directed you to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's when their hearts began to understand that, that, that Prophet is not somebody who came and went. Allah puts into their heart that, I have an immense secret in this reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and I want you to find that reality. And Allah puts into their being like a magnet that they're immensely attracted to Sayyidina Muhammad 
And that's how you know things are happening by Allah's guidance because Allah nobody can be guided except by Allah granting guidance. So when someone thinks they love Allah but Allah didn't love them back by giving them the signs of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And the ones whom truly their character was accepted, their way was accepted and Allah granted them His Divinely love, He gains them to love the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then as a result of directing themselves into that reality, the immensity of that love, the durood, the salawats, all of the praisings, all of the understanding and all of the knowledges that Prophet is now directing into their hearts of His reality and what Allah has dressed upon them. Now Prophet is beginning to reflect, find my Muhammadiyoon because I'm dressing you with my love. Are you mesmerized by my love? And of course they're mesmerized by it. They'll seek the whole world to find a Muhammadan association just to get from that light of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Once they eat and drink from that reality there's nowhere else they can go. There's no food that can sustain them, there's no knowledge that's of, of worth to them. Because of the high level of the Muhammadan haqqaiq that Prophet has deposited into their soul, they can only sit at the tables of the Muhammadiyoon. And that was their life in which to go towards the ulul amr. And as a result they sat with these ulul amr and they were mesmerized by the Muhammadan light that dressed them, blessed them and partook all of their associations. Every time they sat in the association their hearts would see the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad see Ashab al-Nabi, see Ahlul Bayt al-Nabi because it was a reflection of that reality. When they're raised in that reality and raised in the associations of Sultanul Awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and all the Naqshbandi shaykhs, how they could eat from something else? How could they sit with anything else? How, how could anything else feed their reality? No much how much they tried to listen to other people that had nothing in comparison to that reality, that reflection, that fires and the energy. It was a whole package, it wasn't a, a book being read to somebody and something being said, it was a whole reality of what they said, what they did, what the reality of the light was and how it dressed the soul and blessed the soul. So then they became like a bulbul, a, a bird and a flower from paradise and they are directly from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad As they speak and as they teach people are mesmerized by that reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then the ones whom don't have they're like a crow and they get very upset and angry because they don't have that, they don't understand that and they begin just to attack that and that becomes the reality of, of this dunya. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensity of that love, that Allah accept our love and as a result begin to direct us to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And through that light and through that love that is the najat. Is that iqtarab as when you saw the clock, now the signs are coming. So that's what the believer needs that when these difficulties are coming, my case has to be good, I have to be sincere and I have to have the love of Allah And if Allah's love is dressing me, it should be directing me to where He loves. I want to teach you knowledges not of myself. I want to teach you the knowledges of what I love and they are called Muhammadan haqqaiqs, haqiqatan Muhammadiyya. So those are the signs and the apparent signs and all 1500 years of awliyaullah have discussed that reality. That when Allah wants to dress you and to make you a saint and to dress you from the realities of sainthood you have to be fed haqiqatan Muhammadiyya. And that is the, the, the opening of every reality. There are seven hamims in Holy Qur'an. Hamim is haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya, haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya. Every time haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya opened 
a verse of Fatiha opened. First Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah opened, then Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahmanir Raheem, Maliki Yawmiddin. Means all of these realities opened by Allah establishing Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah, the highest and most pure truth and is called the Muhammadan truth. InshaAllah dress us and bless us from those realities and those are the realities of dress and the armour of the believer against every type of falsehood, inshaAllah. Click the link now to subscribe.